guys, Web 3.0 is over. It's totally dead. We've completely skipped past that and moved on to Web 5. So that's the big buzz that's floating on the internet right now as ex-Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey has just announced Web5, which seeks to bring decentralized applications to the Bitcoin blockchain as an alternative to what's happening right now in Web 3.0. And so I've seen a lot of people talking about this. They've been asking me about it on my YouTube live streams. And in this video, I'm going to break down everything you need to know about Web5, including how it works, you know, what's the future prospect of this technology, and is it a Web 3.0 killer? So I'm going to talk about this as a blockchain developer, you know, a web 3.0 developer who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, you know, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to have master blockchain and web 3.0 step by step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. So former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey just announces Web5, a new platform built on the Bitcoin blockchain. So let's just break it down. What is it? Why is it important? What you need to understand? Well, first of all, let's talk about what Web 3.0 is in the first place. So this is the evolution of the internet from the internet 1.0, which is basically just static websites and email, to Web 2.0, which is more advanced, you know, web applications that actually like database backed where you can create usernames and passwords, sign in and have rich web experiences. Also the internet of mobile and then onto Web 3.0, which is basically an internet that's powered by blockchains where you can actually create an internet of value that has all these benefits like trustlessness, transparency, censorship, resistance, decentralization, and a whole lot more. And so we've seen Web 3.0 absolutely explode over the past 18 months or so. And, you know, riding this trend, we see Web 5 breaking on the space. So what is it? So basically, it's essentially just Web 3.0 built on top of Bitcoin. So let me explain what I mean by that. I'll look at my diagram here. So let's look at how people experience the web under different paradigms. So if you look at this you know, example here, I've got a user, all right, that's connecting to a website. Okay, it's like a front end website written in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And you know, in a web 2.0 or web 1.0 paradigm, basically that front end talks to a web server. That's where all the data and the programs that run it, you know, live. That's kind of a simple example. But that's that's essentially the division of responsibilities. Now in a web 3.0 paradigm, uh, maybe let's say that website talks directly to a blockchain like Ethereum. So, you know, Ethereum is a blockchain that supports smart contracts. It, you know, has its native cryptocurrency, Ether, that pays the gas fees, that is going to run, you know, the validators for stakers on ETH 2.0 and a lot more. All right, and that's kind of the, the Web 3.0 paradigm with other EVM compatible blockchains and other smart contract platforms that essentially try to do the same thing. That's really what Web 3.0 is. But Web 5, what it does, let's, say, let's, let's fork in the road here. Let's take this front end website and point it straight to this thing called the Lightning Network. And then that Lightning Network talks to the Bitcoin blockchain. That's what it means, essentially, to have uh, Web 3.0 built on top of Bitcoin. So what is a Lightning Network? Well, the Lightning Network is essentially a layer two for the Bitcoin blockchain, where you can uh, do things that you can't really do natively on top of Bitcoin. So let me explain what I mean by that. So one big limitation of Bitcoin right now, essentially, is that it's a blockchain that it's kind of purpose built for one main function, which is essentially just to move cryptocurrency around, right? That's kind of the whole idea of Bitcoin in the first place is create a peer to peer digital cash system. There wasn't any real long term vision for Bitcoin to be a robust decentralized application platform. You can do things like write scripts on top of Bitcoin, but you can't really build sophisticated programs. And that's exactly what a blockchain like Ethereum was created for in the first place. The whole idea was to create a blockchain that had a cryptocurrency like Ether, that's the native cryptocurrency of the Ethereum blockchain, but also could do things like build actual Turing complete programs with smart contracts to create a decentralized world computer. And that was sort of the vision for Web 3.0 from the early days. And so if you want to do something type similar on Bitcoin, you can't do it on Bitcoin out of the box. And then that's what the Lightning Network is for, this layer two that gets added on top. And now this Web 5 solution that basically uses uses the Lightning Network to try to build Web 3.0 applications on top of Bitcoin. That's that's really how it works. And so now let's talk about the truth about Web 5 and whether I think it could be a Web 3.0 killer. So let's start off with sort of the background and who created it and what the impetus might be for that to try to set the stage for this argument. So, you know, Web 5 was created by Jack Dorsey, the former CEO of Twitter, you know, also the CEO of what was formerly known as Square, which has turned into Block, which, you know, is part of the Blockhead, which has created Web 5. So, you know, Jack is a longtime Bitcoiner, okay, arguably a Bitcoin maximalist, has not had a lot of nice things to say about Web 3.0 and Ethereum. 
you know, all due respect for Jack, he's, you know, built a lot of amazing stuff out there. Credit should definitely go where credit is due. But he basically thinks Bitcoin is the superior technology out there and really hates Web 3.0. So essentially, we're just taking Web 3.0's ideas and say these belong on Bitcoin. And so it feels like there's an axe to grind and there's an agenda here. And so there are various reasons why this is the case. Uh, I think some of the biggest arguments is that, you know, Bitcoin is the most decentralized out there, okay, that therefore Bitcoin is a superior currency. And so we should be creating applications that are on top of Bitcoin. We should be paying fees with Bitcoin and securing those applications with Bitcoin instead of something else like Ethereum, which they're going to argue is, you know, a pre-mined scam, all this type of stuff. So there's definitely a lot of that floating around. But here's the hard truth about Web5 is that it has a lot of ground to cover in order to dethrone something like Web 3.0. So let's just say for argument's sake that Web 5 was a superior technology from its actual implementation standpoint to Web 3.0. Let's just assume that for a second. I'm not even saying that's true. But let's assume it. If it was, well, it's not always the best technology that always wins. Sometimes it's just one's the most adopted with the most momentum. Okay. So if you look at the momentum for something like Web 3.0 built on a chain like Ethereum, so Ethereum is a clear category leader, and you know, second, third, and fourth place behind it are not even close. And so, you know, Ethereum's been around for a very long time as a big head start. And all these other chains that have sort of copied Ethereum's model and tried to chase it have had a really hard time, you know, capturing even a fraction amount of that activity. And basically, you know, Web5 has the same problem and it even has to cross the chasm that these other ones did. So let's talk about why. So again, like I said before, it's not always the best technology that wins, sometimes the one's most momentum. Part of this is because of network effect. So essentially, you know, you, Jack should definitely understand this, you know, working with Twitter is that a social network is only valuable if you have other people using it. That's the whole idea of network effect. You don't want to get on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter if nobody else is posting anything. You want other people to see your post, like and engage, you know, message, all that stuff. Same thing with the blockchain and a decentralized application network. Web 3.0 is useless or Web 5 is useless if it doesn't have any applications and it doesn't have any users on top of it. And that's the really hard part. That's the really hard part to get. And he should know that. So really what you need is a massive network of applications that people want to use that all talk to one another. And you need massive incentives for people to build those applications on top of those networks. And you need a lot of time in order to amass that network effect because it's something that has an exponential, that the linear growth in you know users has an exponential relationship to the value that's there. And that turns into like switching costs for like why people want to leave your network and go to a different one. And that makes it harder and harder and harder for Web 5 to actually cross that gap and compete with something like Web 3.0 is today. Now, there is a caveat to that. Okay, let's just assume that, you know, they could actually compete with something like Ethereum's network effect. One of the reasons this is a possibility is because, you know, Bitcoin is such a large cryptocurrency. It's such a massive house name that it could actually attract the attention and the eyeballs enough to get people to start using it. But there's even a caveat to that is that things are being built on top of the Lightning Network and the Lightning Network doesn't really even get used that much. OK, we have, you know, Bitcoin and people you know make transactions on Bitcoin, but not many people really use Bitcoin to pay for stuff. Most people buy Bitcoin and they hold it or they trade it, you know, mostly like a store of value. But, you know, Lightning Network, as far as payments go, like it's, it's not that used right now. So that's a caveat and then kind of a caveat to that caveat. Now, the other caveat is the multi-chain future. So there's a few different schools of thought on this. All right. So. One idea is that, you know, essentially with the idea of network effect is that you know, you're going to have all these different, you know, decentralized application platforms right there, but there's a, a majority is probably going to go to a single winner where, you know, we have something like Ethereum has a pretty big head start right now. Let's just assume for argumentation's sake that that continues off into the future, that it's really hard to catch up with that. And there's a Pareto distribution where a majority of the activity happens in one place. And then maybe you have sort of a long tail of other alternatives. Like think about search engines, you know, vast majority of search engine activity goes on Google, but you technically have DuckDuckGo and these other ones, but they have a really small slice of the pie. That's one sort of vision of the multi-chain future is where you technically have other blockchains, but you know, most of the activity stays on one. Okay, but there's the caveat of what if there is a multi-chain future where you have other blockchains where you, that store different amounts of value and these blockchains are actually interoperable with one another where you can cross between different chains pretty seamlessly or that these other chains actually serve a function where they're all working together to serve some bigger, more abstracted use case. There's a possibility where Web5 could be, you know, a contender in that marketplace as well, assuming that these different chains provide some sort of value in an aggregate sense. But there's even a caveat for that, which is the interoperability. So a lot of the chains that have launched right now are EVM compatible, which basically means if you can, you know, execute, you know, programs on Ethereum, then you can execute them on these other chains. That's one of the reasons we've seen these other ecosystems grow up so fast. And so, you know, cross-chain com 
compatibility gets a lot easier between EVM compatible chains because there's fewer variables involved. It's a lot easier to switch between them. It's a lot easier to plug the same types of tools like MetaMask into them. But to my knowledge, we don't see that on Web 5.0. Again, I don't know for sure, but if it doesn't have the same compatibility interfaces with these other types of blockchains, then it might be harder for it to fit in this multi-chain world that everybody's engineering for right now. And so another thing I want to talk about is basically what does this mean for developers? You know, that's primarily who I serve on my channel are people who are really interested in technology trying to become blockchain developers. That's what I personally do. So, uh, you know, there's a couple of things. There's, there's the opportunity and then there's, there's the fear side of this. Like, there's always two sides of the coin when this kind of type of tech hits the scene. One is like, oh, something cool that I could go learn that has a bunch of upside potential. Uh, or like, hey, I'm worried. I know these programming languages, this technology, and it looks like this new thing is coming onto the scene and that like what I know now is going to be completely irrelevant. So let's start off with that one. So first of all, like I was saying before, Web 5 has got a long way to go uh, before we even compete with something like, you know, Web 3.0. So there's always like this fear that whatever I know now is not going to be relevant. I don't think you have any short term concerns about that. OK, definitely subscribe to the channel, turn notifications if this ever becomes a problem. Trust me, you'll be the first to know. And my incentive will be the first to pivot to switch to that type of thing because I'm always trying to be on the bleeding edge of this tech. But not right now, I don't see it that way. So the other side is the opportunity. Now, if you are a developer looking for opportunity, like let's say Web5 doesn't even become this massive thing, but it becomes this like microcosm niche. Well, if you can become, you know, if you own that microcosm niche, then there could be a lot of, you know, upside potential for you. If you become like a leading expert in a, in a small field, and that could be huge. Now, there's always risk associated with this because what if it doesn't take off, right? Then you spend a lot of time investing in something that doesn't really give you any really long-term benefit. And that's why I say for most people, if they're like on the fence trying to say like, oh, I'm scared about this Web5 thing. Like, should I be focusing on that instead of like learning what I'm learning now? I would say absolutely not. Like stick with whatever you're doing now. Because the last thing you want to do is jump around from technology to technology, especially if you're in your early phase of your development career. You're going to get more mileage out of committing to something and sticking with it, even if you have to decide to change later. Lots of programmers learn new programming languages across their career. So the best thing is definitely stay the course and don't get FOMO and don't get shiny object syndrome. Now that being said, you know, there could be a potential for Web5 in the future. I'm open-minded, you know, I'll keep an eye on this. But as of now, it does look like something that has a little bit of agenda behind it that has an axe to grind behind Web 3.0 right now, that thinks that Bitcoin is the only superior platform and superior cryptocurrency. And for that reason, everything that Web 3.0 has done right now that's any good belongs on Bitcoin. So we're just going to take your ideas and try to push you off to the side and bring everything into our own house and try to convince everybody to do that. But they've got a pretty big road ahead of them. They have a massive moat to cross. I'm not saying it can't happen, but it's a steep hill to climb. So that's all I got for today. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Daily ups his videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast in this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like giving me courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. Felt people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.